Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Brandon Lester Fishing. Doing something a little bit different this morning. Uh, woke up this morning bright and early, got down here, headed south. We're gonna go try to catch some crappie uh, on Gunnersville Lake. I've done a ton of bass fishing down here and just a little bit of crappie fishing. And honestly, you know, from, from what I can tell, you know, looking at crappie tournament weights and stuff down here, this is one of the best crappie fishing lakes that we have in the southeast. Um, so I'm gonna go out here and see what I can do. You know, I've, I've bass fished down here quite a few times this summer and I've marked some big brush piles that are look like they're loaded with crappie. So I'm pretty excited to get out here and kind of explore and see, uh, see what I can find because I've not crappie fished down here much at all. So should be a fun day. Y'all stay tuned. Let's see what we can do. Yes, first cast of the day. That's crappy too. <laughs> I'm just starting out with a. I'll show y'all my setup here. That's a little guy. He's a. He's a keeper down here in Alabama. They've only got to be nine inches, and you can keep thirty. But I kind of got a self-imposed size limit when it comes to that whole nine-inch deal. You don't. In my opinion, you just don't get much meat off of a nine incher. Now, if you want to keep a nine incher, that's that's your business. I mean, the state the state makes the rules, but me personally, if it's not ten inches, I'm I'm probably not going to keep it. But uh, we're just fishing a big old brush pile right here, and there's oh, heck, there's a hundred of them down there. There he is. Whoa, what do we have here now? That's a crappie, that's a nice one. And it is. I can see some big dots down in there, and I know, I know what them big dots are. They're crappie, I can tell. I've looked at enough stuff on Active Target, I can tell what I'm looking at, but that's probably 11 inch, or we'll throw him in there. I'll keep a few of them. I made that first cast and caught one. I was like, yeah, it's about to go down, but they, uh, <laughs> they're not biting as good as I thought they were going to. So I, I had a double jig rig tied up there. Put that double jig rig down there and got one to bite. bass bit it on the way down no it's a big crappie golly bone that's crazy i thought that was a bass i really did i i saw my bait sinking and uh i noticed the bait quit sinking and there was a there was a big blob that definitely stood out among the rest and that's what it was <laughs> about a 13 inch crappie wild I don't, I don't know what he was doing he was just up away from the rest of the school and if i can ever get that color dialed in we will really whack them right here i need to try something There we go. Maybe that's the deal. He knocked the fire out of it. Probably ten and a half incher. Just went to a straight straight 1 16th ounce jig head with a crappie magnet on it. I tried a 1 8th ounce. I tried a I tried a smaller one with a uh, split shot on it. 
there's another one finally getting getting dialed in a little bit here i'm gonna tell you guys i think uh i think a lot of times i'm gonna let that one go he's a little bit small I think a lot of times we get wrapped up in color and undoubtedly color makes a difference on crappie. There's, there's no doubt about that. But another thing that makes a big, big difference is the rate of fall on your jig. Sometimes, you know, it's dead slick calm out here right now. I could throw a 132nd ounce jig if I wanted to, but you know, it, to me, it's all about efficiency. If they'll buy the eighth ounce jig, I can get that eighth ounce jig down there a lot, to them a lot quicker. So that's what I'm gonna throw. But I threw a one eighth ounce jig in there. I threw a 32nd ounce jig with a split shot, with a split shot in there. There's another one. <clears throat> I threw all these different combinations in there and uh, they weren't biting it. I picked up that straight 1 16th ounce head some of it may have something to do with that color as well um but i think that that color crappie magnet is called killer clap that's a great great color it's like a light blue it's got some silver flake in it and it's got that um, real natural looking tail on it but i think more so than anything i honestly think it's the rate of fall that's getting these fish to bite because these fish are sitting right out on the main river channel and there's a creek channel that that goes out and meets the main river channel right here and there's a huge brush pile sitting there so this is a, a current oriented spot it's a feed spot for those fish they sit there and feed on shad whenever they come by give y'all an idea of what we're looking at right here you can see the brush pile right down in here. I'm gonna kind of pan back and forth. You see all them fish sitting right up above that. It's a huge brush pile. And you can see all the all the fish sitting right up above that brush pile. Like I said, some of it's bluegill. Here's a couple of bigger dots right here. Those are crappie. There's a lot of bluegill in there, but there's a whole lot of crappie in there too. I've just got my active target set on uh 50 feet out i'm just staying back away from these fish about uh, 30 to 40 feet and I, I could get right up on them if i wanted to they're not they don't seem to be real real spooky but i just i don't like to crowd them there we go that one didn't thump it at all it just got heavy One thing about crappie fishing, probably the most important part of crappie fishing, I, I take a lot of people, try to show them how to do it, and not a lot of people, but a few people, and I'll let that one go. Biggest thing I see is people don't know when they're getting a bite. I mean, right now I'm using braid with a fluorocarbon leader, but most of the time I use high-vis line, and I do that so I can watch that line, and I know when I'm getting a bite. And I have taken people before and they're sitting there watching their line just jumping, thump, 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 thump. And uh, they have no idea. They can't, they can't feel it. They don't know. And it, it does take some time. It definitely does. You gotta have a real light feel. You almost gotta have a sixth sense. But when I'm working that jig, sometimes you'll see me just barely bump that rod. And that's not for, um, there was a bump right there. There, golly, that was a crappie. I'm not bumping that rod to impart action into that jig. You don't have to do that with crappie. Crappie just like a straight reel. The reason why I bump that rod every now and then, I'm feeling that jig. And sometimes on those ones that just barely, where, where it's just a mushy bite instead of that thump, sometimes on those real mushy bites, that's why I'm picking up on that rod like that. I'm trying to feel for those ones that are just sitting there riding on it. Feels like a pretty decent one. Yep. 
Another good crappie. That's what we come down here for right there now. Check that one out. Probably a 12 incher. Get some good fillets off of him. All right, y'all notice I got some new rods right here. Um, a couple of years back, I've talked about this on my channel. I got the opportunity with Mustad to build my signature series bass rods. Um, and when Mustad decided to go into the rod market, they went all in. So they've been working on these and I just got these in yesterday. These are actually Mustad, um, they call them the detector series, ultralight jig and spin rod. They are absolutely perfect little crappie rods. They'd be great for trout fishing and stuff like that as well. There's three different models. There's a six foot medium light. There's a six foot six light and there's a seven foot two light. So I've got one of each right here in my hand. This is the six foot in the middle, the six, six on the right and the seven, two in my left hand. But, um, I got several of them in the, in the, uh, in the mail yesterday and wanted to come out here and try them out today. But just taking a little bit closer look at these rods, man. I mean, these are very, very well built rods and they're affordable rods as well. I think the retail on them is 79 bucks, I think. But just very stylish looking. They got cork integrated with EVA foam. Um, I love this cork right here on the, on the foregrip. That's super comfortable. Um, they look really good. They fish really good. They're super sensitive. I would say, honestly, my favorite one so far is this six foot medium light. That's, uh, well, actually this is the six, six light, but that little six foot medium light is, is, uh, I like it a lot, you know, but they're all three really great. And today is the first day that I've, like I said, that I've used them. So, you know, jury's still out, but I like all three of them at this point in the day, I've caught a fish on all three of them. And uh, they're perfect little rods, but they're made with quality components, Fuji guides. Uh, like I said, they got some premium cork in the handle. Um, and then they've got a little bit of EVA foam here just for comfort as well. But if you're looking for some good little spinning rods, I know I always get asked about what rods I've used. And, and in the past, I've used a lot of different rods, but there you go. Mustadfishing.com, uh, MidwayUSA.com. You can find them there. Awesome. Awesome rods. Super excited about these. Got him. I had to play keep away with that one, but I got him. I saw him coming up. Oh, that's a big one too. I could tell it was on active target. He barely hooked too. I think I can flip him. Oh, we're gonna try it. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. I saw two or three big marks down there on that stump. And uh, I finally, I, I got him interested in my jig and I just, I sped it up and I just kept bringing it and bringing it and bringing it. And he couldn't take it, he had to have it. That's a dang good one right there. I'm seeing a pattern here and it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, and it makes perfect sense. Those fish that are in those great big schools are like 20 and 30 of them. A lot of those are your nine inches and stuff. But the ones that you see kind of sitting real close to that stump and there's only two or three or four of them, those are the bigger crappie. That's pretty, uh, that's a pretty neat deal. And you know, that's something that we've always kind of suspected. And now that we have active target or live scope, whatever you run, uh, now we're able to see that kind of thing it's i don't know that's the kind of things about fishing that are really interesting to me did the same thing with that one i just sped it up and he finally uh he finally ate it that's a smaller one there we're gonna let him go Barely got him. Good, he got back. All right, I'm gonna try to show you guys what I'm talking about right here. So all this stuff right up here, and a lot of that's crappie, but it's smaller ones. It's these ones right down here that, uh, and a lot of times, like the bigger fish, you can't even see them because they're sitting so tight. Like you can see one right there flashing inside that stump. 
they're so tight to that stump that you have to get your jig down there. There's another one in Biggins right there. You have to get your jig down there and actually call them out of that stump before you can even really see them. But there's several of them sitting there and those are the bigger fish. Give y'all an idea of what I'm fishing. You see all these stumps right here. Um, and just looking at those stumps, I mean, you really don't see a whole lot of fish on them, but the deal is you you put that active target on there on those stumps and there'll be a little school of fish sitting down there there's some bass right there but see there's a really big stump right there I, see looking at it on side scan you wouldn't think there was anything on that unless there's a really big school there a lot of times you won't see it on side but then you get up there on uh, on active target and you'll see what's really down there there's tons of stumps on this little flat right here all right guys that's gonna wrap it up for today man it's fun when you try something new and it works out and that's exactly what happened today you know i didn't really know what to expect i felt like uh, i was down here earlier this summer fishing for bass and stuff and i marked a couple of brush piles that i felt pretty confident were schools of crappie uh, and come to find out they were schools of crappie and i found some new stuff today that i didn't even know was there so it was a fun, fun day. Caught probably 50. I kept about 15 or 20 to take home and clean. Um, may have even caught more than that. I caught a lot of them, but looked around a lot, found some new stuff, like I said, but definitely looking forward to getting back down here. It was a fun trip. Hey, uh, smash that subscribe button if you hadn't. We're going to ramp up these crappie videos. We're just getting started for the fall and winter, so um, we got a lot more coming down the line, so y'all stay tuned for that. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you next time right here. Brandon Lester Fishing.